Tuesday morning, we had some pretty weird weather here in Ohio. You look one direction, it was blue skies and sunny, and the other direction, it was raining. But that's not the only weird thing going on. Sneaking in the back door at Chumpy's. Surprise, Chumpy. Mark's got a couple helpers down there that we call Thing 1 and Thing 2, and they usually keep him stressed completely out. So Jeremy likes to try and sneak up behind Mark when he's not looking, hoping to catch Mark on camera, saying or doing something that he can use to blackmail him for a parts discount later on. But Jeremy forgot that his parts bills do, which is likely the only thing that kept Mark from blowing a gasket when he saw him come in. Well, here goes all my potatoes. Ooh, right into my plate. I'm gonna be able to sit down right for no, a month. No potatoes. After I visit you, I don't get to sit down for a month. Really? Over here, you're smiling and shit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> then you got thing one reproducing today. Yeah, what that's a about that? That's a catastrophe. That is gonna be a catastrophe. And you say they had to induce her? Uh, I'll stop. He needs induced too, so I don't know. Like every morning. After he got done at Mark's, he went up to the farm to check on mom and dad and the goats. 50-50, you're a pain in the ass. Literally. So while Jeremy's day isn't going really well, the exact opposite is true for me. Kenny Powers made it in early today to help clean up the shop and put tools away after Billy took his S10 apart. And Kenny even managed to get the engine compartment and frame all cleaned up after the engine blew up at 42. So once we had all that done, we rolled the S10 outside and it was time to bring the Malibu in. Now, as you guys saw in the last video, I was having trouble with the nitrous system when I was up at Dragway 42 Thursday testing for no prep kinks. Now, the nitrous system was only giving trouble when I was operating it with the nitrous controller. So I was concerned maybe that controller wasn't capable of driving these bigger solenoids. So I got on Nitrous Express's website and got to snooping around to see what all was available. There's a lot of really good information available on the website. Everything from jet charts to detailed instructions on how to set up your Nitrous system. And when I got to poking around, I realized Nitrous Express also has their own YouTube channel. And that is where I stumbled across the Nitrous Express Maximizer 5 Nitrous Progressor. And after watching a couple of videos, I just had to have one. But the upgrades don't stop there. You see, the plate that I currently have is the mainline kit, which only has four holes in each spray bar. So I figure this dual entry crossbar kit should wake the old Malibu up and allow me to have quite a bit of adjustability over what I used to have. So I went ahead and pulled the NOS Mini controller out of the Malibu and pulled the old nitrous plate off and started test fitting the new dual entry billet crossbar two-stage nitrous plate. Evidently, Nitrous Express really did their homework with this nitrous bracket because it clears everything in the front of the engine and the distributor without any problems. So once I was sure that the bracket would clear everything on the engine, I started mocking everything up and mounting the solenoids and coming up with a game plan on how to plumb everything to make it look nice and neat. Based on the intake manifold and everything on the Malibu, I want to make some changes to the fittings underneath the solenoids to protect the flex lines from getting crimped. So that's going to mean a trip to Jeg's tomorrow to see Uncle Terry. So first thing Wednesday, I hopped in the Suburban and ran into Columbus. Luckily, Uncle Terry works on Wednesdays and he'll be able to help me locate all the fittings I need. And I can't wait to see what he thinks of this new nitrous contraption I've laid out on his counter. I said, this looks like it's getting pretty serious here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, things escalate. It looks like they escalated. <laughs> <laughs> so get this. Nitrous Express wants me to bring that freaking cracker barrel Excellent. to PRI. Oh, really? Yeah. In her booth? Yeah. Very, very cool. Can you believe that? Well, I'd, I'd say with their mainline kit, which they say wouldn't do what, they, what you had to do, <laughs> I'd say that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> so they want the latest and greatest shiznits on the old cracker barrel Malibu. Yeah. And that's, that's this. That's the latest and greatest. Dual entry. Double crossbar, two stage. Horsepower wise, what is it? Well, I've got number one set at 150 and number two at 200. Oh, which horsepower wise, jetting wise, it's no different than what it is, but it's got to be a whole lot better distribution wise. Well, here's the thing see, I don't have to turn both of them on at the same time. All right. I can either run the 150 or I can run the 200. But you can run them both together. But I can run them both together if I decide to. Technically, that's 350 horsepower. 
Technically. Technically. <laughs> but I need some fitness. Or it's scattered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's my here's my dilemma. See how these lines come straight out the bottom of those solenoids? Yeah. And I don't like how they're in the intake manifold yeah. there. So I want to put some 90s on here to turn those out. You think you can hook me up with that? Yes, no problem. So while Terry's hooking me up with the fittings I need in at Jeg's, Uncle Bucko and Uncle Rob are over at Rob's house winching a dead Mustang up onto the trailer. And Jeremy is talking a lot of crap to Robbie about how his old 36 Chevy Coupe is going to outrun Rob's Mustang when he gets it running. My egg crate's going to blow your doors off. Never. This bucket of turds. Your screen door? Yep. Your 1935 screen door? Now, Robbie didn't start the attack here, but he's definitely dishing it back to Jeremy. You see, Jeremy is very much into antique stuff. In Jeremy's eyes, if it ain't steel, it ain't real. So needless to say, Jeremy doesn't have much respect for anything with plastic bumpers and a plastic dash. But the reason Robbie calls his coupe a screen door is because the coupe is literally framed out of wood. The dash is steel and the outsides of the doors are steel, but the inner structure of the car is made from wood. You and your, what is it, 96 snail turd? 94 snail turd. So after they got the Mustang winched up on the trailer, they took it down to Billy's shop where the shit talk commenced. Best get prepared. Three sixes is coming for you. We'll see what happens there, Robbo. I've got three motors in this thing. You have one in here. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Let's start off with this. 50th on race day. Flip over read directions. Turd stang. So while they're finishing up down at Billy's, I stopped on the way home and got a little bit of lunch for myself. And the dogs didn't let me forget that I'm supposed to share chicken nuggets with them. Robbie logged on to Nitrous Express's website in the office and brought up all the instructions for the Max 5 controller and the Nitrous kit. Once he had everything laid out where he wanted it, he decided the best place to mount the controller was in the glove box. That way it's easily accessible in case we want to tune it with a laptop. And luckily it doesn't take up much room in the glove box anyway. So after Robbie had that taken care of, next he moved on to plumbing and started wiring up the nitrous kit on the workbench. Robbie was just about ready to set everything back down on the engine and bolt it down when Billy and Tommy got back to the shop from dropping off Billy's new small block engine parts up at Bob McVeigh's. So once Junior came in and saw what was going on in the shop, the shit talk started almost immediately. What'd you say? I said, you ready to get gapped yet or what? I'm working on my shit, son. Well, everybody in the comments is wondering why you weren't at the last race that I put on. What are you talking you about? Tell them why you weren't there? Yeah, I was you tired. Them, you wanna tell them the truth? The truth yeah. is I wanted to take your mom out to dinner. I wanted to mow my freaking grass and I wanted to relax. That's the truth. The race started at seven. <clears throat> you were tired. So I know he likes to shit on us all the time about we don't get out of bed, but this dude was mowing his grass at five in the afternoon. He, Could have been mowing did, it at noon. He did mow his grass. I'll give him that. But that's just an excuse. He, he didn't have to mow his grass. It wasn't even that bad. Right. And it was like really windy. And the weather wasn't that good. I was busy. I didn't have fresh tires. My nitrous kit was screwing up. You saw I had trouble at freaking 42, which I figured out what was going on there anyway. Okay, so the truth comes out. What? So he needs, he needs a nitrous controller to race now. He can't just grab that shit when he leaves like a man. I'm gonna grab you like a man here a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you, just, you can't just lean on everything like me. Well, I would like to win. You don't necessarily always win. Like right now, You've beat Kenny once out of how many times? You're how like, many races have I lost when it all comes on? I don't know. How many times have you raced it? I've never lost when the nitrous comes on. You You've won well. two races. Two total races. And you're standing here talking all this <clears throat> One against a Cadillac CTSV. Listen, I'm that, ready for that Malibu. Oh my God. Talk some sense into your brother. The only sense I know is the other day you said... Talk, try to talk him out of it so I don't look stupid. Listen, the only sense I know is the other day... You're going to cut this out of the video, but he was like... Oh, oh I'm, 
I'm gonna cut it out? Talk to me, Tigger. Literally the other day, you said, I don't have enough for that Mustang on the street. I never said that. Okay, yep, here it comes. I literally never Why? said that. Why would I say something like that? It was after he finally beat Kenny. Malibu's been parked for two weeks. Two weeks? You've been in witness protection. <laughs> we gotta put you on a note carton. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> we'll see what happens when we get this thing back together. Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. It is Wednesday night, and we don't quite have the nitrous kit finished on the Malibu yet. Uh, Robbie's coming back tomorrow to help me finish wiring up the controller and wiring the system up. I think I got to run back to Jegs to pick up a few fittings. Uh, Robbie wanted to change a couple things that I had laid out. No big deal. It's going to make it better. Uh, so I think tomorrow, me and Tommy are headed to Jegs at noon. I think we're going to go get lunch together and then we're going to go to Jegs and I got to pick up some stuff for the Malibu. And I think Tommy needs to go pick up some stuff for the Dart. So. That'll be on the agenda for tomorrow. So I got to admit, I didn't come up with this name on my own. Um, Robbie had always called the car soft serve because Jeremy makes fun of it as my ice cream car. I didn't really, it wasn't my thing, but it was whatever. It was kind of funny. But the other day, uh, I made a post on Facebook and I asked everybody if this car was going to be at PRI on display whose booth would you most likely find the car in? And someone made the comment, Cracker Barrel. And uh, I'm like, man, that's a perfect name for that car. If it wasn't for the copyright infringement, I'd probably just go ahead and name it that. And they said, name it Cracker Barrel. <laughs> so since I'm of Caucasian descent, <laughs> and that thing is about the same color as the Cracker Barrel signs, and we go to Cracker Barrel all the time. My wife's and I's favorite restaurant. That's where we like to go eat the most. Um, it was just kind of a perfect fit. So I mentioned it to the guys at Nitrous Express, uh, and they loved it. So we're working on some things. Um, <laughs> there'll be some things coming out here pretty soon. Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Uh, but anyway, that's how the Malibu got this name, and it's. I think it's going to stick. So in other news, uh, as you saw... <laughs> Uh, in my last video, I was having trouble with the Malibu up at Dragway 42. The nitrous kept breaking up on it. And I noticed the last pass I made at Edgewater, it went to that 1069. And I noticed on that pass, it broke up a little bit. I mean, it, I thought it was valve float. I thought that's, honestly, I thought it was floating the valves and that's what was causing the problem. Uh, as it turns out, it may have had some valve float problems, but uh, when I started taking the nitrous kit off, I noticed... Two things. One, the ground wire for the wide open throttle switch uh, was um, under the nut for the back carburetor bolt, and it was loose. Uh, and definitely, uh, that's a problem because that ground wire is the trigger signal to the controller to turn the kit on. So if that ground is not good, uh, the controller won't have a good signal to turn on and off. So that was definitely a problem. The other problem I found is that the fuel line on the front of the plate uh, between the fuel solenoid and the plate was loose. Uh, it was literally ready to fall off. So one, that's a vacuum leak. And two, uh, it definitely would have been most likely spraying a little bit of gasoline out uh, when the kit was on, spraying it out on the intake. Um, that definitely would have affected the tune-up, definitely would have caused a problem. And so I feel pretty confident that between the two things, that's most likely why it was starting to break up when it ran 1069 and it continuously got worse every pass I made thereafter. So uh, that tells me that the controller that I just took off, which I thought was suspect, I was afraid that maybe it wasn't strong enough to drive those two new uh, Nitrous Express solenoids that I got. They're much bigger than the ones that came with the kit, but that's not the case. I mean, I don't know. I think it's probably okay, but uh, 
the controller I think is definitely all right. I'll, I'll keep it for a spare laying around here. I may use it on something else. I don't know. Uh, but at, at any rate, we're going to go ahead and replace it with this Max 5 from Nitrous Express, which I'm really excited about. Because, as you noticed, uh, I have put a new torque converter in the Malibu. Bubba Rafferty up at Perfect Converter Company got me hooked up with what I think is <laughs> a really nice converter. It's a billet uh, converter that has a heavy-duty clutch built into the, uh, the, the converter so that I can lock the converter in high gear. Uh, the Malibu has a 700R4 transmission, which has lockup capability. And currently, I just lock it up in overdrive uh, with a switch underneath the dash and a vacuum switch to turn it off. Um, but this new Nitrous controller from Nitrous Express, this Max 5, has three channels. So I've got one channel for each Nitrous kit, well, each phase of the kit, and then I've got a third channel that I can use to lock the converter in high gear based on RPM or a timer. So I'm pretty excited about that. There's some sneaky stuff coming up with that deal that I think I'll be able to probably pull a little bit more ET and a little bit more mile an hour out of this thing. Now I can tell you that obviously these two plates are a lot different. Uh, one's just a mainline kit and it only has four holes in each side of the plate to let the gas or fuel and nitrous out. Whereas this new kit has a lot of holes. I didn't count them, but there's a bunch. Uh, and it's a two stage. Now I don't plan necessarily to run both stages at the same time. Uh, I jetted one at 150 and I jetted the other one at 200 because that's the jets that I had available at the time. Um, will I turn both of them on? Probably. Eventually that's probably going to happen. But uh, I can tell you that I think that this kit probably is going to make more power on 150 than the old one did on 200. Now, there's some reasons for that. And if you remember, I changed from uh, mainline solenoids, which are little tiny pea shooter solenoids. I changed from those to those big Nitrous Express Lightning uh, solenoids the other day and changed from a Dash 4 mainline from the trunk to the front of the car. I changed from a Dash 4 to a Dash 6. I didn't change the jets in the plate, the tune-up, the ignition timing, everything exactly the same. The only thing I changed was from a dash four line to a dash six and putting bigger solenoids on. And it picked up three tenths and three miles an hour. There's a big, big difference between trying to run nitrous on little tiny lines and little tiny solenoids and big line and big solenoids. It makes a big difference. Uh, and another thing I wanted to show you guys is the mainline kit, even though I had the dash six line and even though I had the big solenoids, it still had the dash three flex lines between the nitrous and the fuel solenoid and the plate. And the difference between a dash three and a dash four is significant. So basically we went from a single dash three nitrous feed line from the solenoid to the plate to two dash fours. So even if I jetted each stage of this kit to 100 horsepower and turned them both on, it's going to get a lot more nitrous to it than it did on a 200 shot on the old plate. So this is why a lot of experienced nitrous tuners kind of chuckle when you tell them, well, I'm on a 200 jet or I'm on a 300 jet. Uh, they like to talk pounds per hour. They don't really care what the jet size is or anything else. Uh, if you're screwing around with a certain plate and you change the solenoids and you change the lines and all that, you change the tune-up. You run the risk of uh, <laughs> serious damage if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so that's why I'm thinking that this kit, even if I jetted both stages to 100 horsepower, 100 horsepower, uh, if I turned them both on, it's probably going to make a lot more than 200 on the old kit. So anyway, guys, that's going to about wrap this video up for tonight. I want to say thank you to Uncle Jimmy Dale, aka Tom Gunner, uh, from Nitrous Express, who reached out to us and uh, offered to help us with our racing program and our street cars. Uh, we greatly appreciate everybody at Nitrous Express. Uh, the reason we kind of got hooked up with Nitrous Express to begin with is because Aaron Gonzalez, uh, messaged me one time years ago, back when Tommy had 
uh, his S10 on nitrous and said, hey man, Nitrous Express would like to send you guys a couple nitrous bottles. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Thank you. And I never forgot that. Uh, and from that point on, if I bought nitrous parts, I always tried to buy Nitrous Express no matter what. And uh, we've stuck with it. And I didn't pester him about nothing. Uh, you know, didn't ask for nothing. These guys kind of approached us and we're very thankful, very grateful for the opportunity. And I'm really excited to take this old car to PRI. I, I can't believe somebody would want me and this and this old Malibu at PRI, but I'm going. Uh, this December, the Performance Racing Industry Trade Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. If you want to come see us, come stop by. And, and, as of today, if you go on nitrousexpress.com and you go place an order, use promo code OMG for 10% off your order. OMG, Old Man's Garage, promo code at nitrousexpress.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Visit our website online at theoldmansgarage.shop.